in the midst of the fruglies, the dark, cool, damp stretch of our winter, we have something to illuminate our lives. Our next guest is a powerhouse of innovation and cultural excellence. He's the man behind the mid-January 20-day Push Festival. He's courageous in his programming, committed to remarkable variety of productions. His risk-taking has given Vancouver audiences so many incredible cultural experiences. He truly offers a feast of creativity. Please welcome someone who's done so much for our city, Norman Armour. Uh, Sam and Lynn uh, graciously invited me to join the group of speakers tonight and to speak of something I was passionate about. Unfortunately, I am somewhat of a one-horse rider, a driven and somewhat one-topic-minded individual. And yes, I will talk about the arts. More specifically, the live performing arts. And even more specifically, the art of the theatre. Something I've been uh, passionate about for a good 35 years of my career, and mildly curious about throughout my upbringing. Now I have to warn you, perhaps, uh, perhaps disappoint you, there will be no images, no PowerPoint, no graphs, nor will there be a Venn diagram or an idea bubble, and I'm sure I've even gotten that one wrong. I will I'll undoubtedly fail at this, so I ask for your patience and sympathy. I won't try to inspire you or to get you to donate money, I mean, to the arts, of course, I just finished up the 14th edition of the annual Push Festival where, among other things, I spoke to various theatres full of various people a good 30 times on those two very topics. So, not tonight. As I mentioned, the passion I am compelled to speak of to you is the arts. However, I won't attempt to convince you of the value of the arts, or at least I'll try not to convince you too overtly. I won't speak of economic multipliers or cultural tourism or a healthy city. I won't speak of how necessary the arts are if one wants to attract talent to the city or how crucial they are when one considers how hard it will be to increasingly to become, you know, to retain, retain talent given the ridiculously rising costs of living in Vancouver. No, I, I promise not to snidely quip that people don't live in or visit New York City because of the mountains and the water. Though it's worth noting, New York City did famously have mountains in the background shots of Jackie Chan's Rumble in the Bronx, which was filmed in about Vancouver. <laughs> I'm not going to speak about what makes a world-class city, of what defines Paris, Berlin, Buenos Aires, Barcelona, San Francisco, or Rome. Why spend time on that old argument, right? I'm not qualified to speak of how the arts can play a critical role in the development of any child, nor am I properly educated on how that early exposure and training can stay with them for a lifetime, regardless of their eventual career path or vocation. And I'm certainly not eloquent enough to speak to you tonight of how artistic expression is fundamental to our nature, to us as human beings, as sentient be beings, as playful beings, as expressive beings. For that particular angle, our very own Max Wyman is a bona fide seer. Uh, just check out, if it's, check out his incisive, inspiring treatise, The Defiant Imagination. A quick side note here. Not all art is about telling stories. Some art is for simple pleasure. Some is a uh, challenge to the brain. Some is purely about ideas, about documentation, about speculation, analysis. And at necessary times, like the one we find ourselves in now, outright protest and resistance. Indeed, it can be argued that artists are the true journalists of our times. Okay, I am now at three minutes and 30... <laughs> three seconds left to go. Now admission, I'm a notoriously long-winded. I promise I will not tonight be that long-winded. I promise I will keep to the allotted seven minutes. I did the Pecha Kucha thing one time, totally failed at it. <laughs> not because of the 12 minute 20 slide confines. No, I can be short and succinct. I'm actually a very acute editor. I love the task of reducing a 55 word paragraph down to 50 words. <laughs> no, I'm just not good in thinking and speaking at increments of 20. Or at least that's how I console myself. So in the remaining two minutes and 58 seconds, <laughs> I will speak to you of only four increments, as it were. And these are very personal. Cost, empathy, 
time possibility. Now, at, at the heart, I'm an artist of the theater. I come by it legitimately. My late mother's Scottish roots are deep in the world of theater back in Glasgow, as well as right here in Canada. The late Mary Moore, a truly Canadian cultural nationalist, was a first cousin and a dear friend. Trained at Simon Fraser University, I worked as an actor, director, technician, a teacher across Canada and a number of US cities. Well over a hundred projects under my belt and a few X-File episodes to boot. <laughs> so when I say theater, think art whenever possible and appropriate. So number one, cost. For me, theater is about the cost of things. The human cost of greed, of lust, of love, of loss, of envy, of betrayal and ambition. As a witness in the theater, we are afforded the pleasure of watching our species play out scenarios of love, ambition, desire, hope, tragedy, and death. All one big fiction of the imagination and the corporeal, a lie and yet with the conviction of truth. Number two, empathy. Theater is about empathy. It teaches us to understand ourselves and things outside ourselves, the other. It teaches us compassion and to see below and beyond the surface of things. It teaches us to watch to listen and to speak of what we observe and wish for. It encourages us to see and be seen, to follow our impulses and to know restraint. Three, time. Theater speaks deeply to the moment, to the times, our times. Legend has it that at the opening for the New York City premiere of Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman in 1949, the Broadway audiences were uncharacteristically silent. No applause. So devastating was the play and Lee J. Cobb's performance. And not just because of the artistry, the strength of the writing, the quality of the performance, but because the play and Cobb's portrayal of a broken man, false in his dreams, bereft in his illusions, and crushed by his sense of failure, spoke so powerfully to a society that too was also broken, false, bereft, and failing. Four, possibility. This is the last one. The theater, 35 seconds, <laughs> is about possibility. Any theater worth its salt takes as its mission not to only show things as they are, but to intimate things as they might be. At its most supreme, the theater is a laboratory, a giant Petri dish for testing and experimentation, a live and incredibly nimble and precise human experiment for taking account of who we are where we are, where we are heading, and perhaps why we are heading that way. And hopefully, hopefully a suggestion perhaps of a different way of being, a different set of reasons, a different way forward. And in a city and region that seems at times to drink possibility like a morning glass of orange juice, the theater is desperately needed and it's desperately wanted. Thank you. <laughs>